Okay, welcome to part four. This is the last part of your reptile notes. Uh, we're beginning with this order of reptile that um, you probably have never seen before. They're lizard-like, um, but there's only two surviving species left. And this is called order Sphenodontida. They have uh, wedge-shaped teeth, essentially. Um, they're found in New Zealand, mostly. And they look like lizards because of convergent evolution. They've remained unchanged for virtually 200 million years. Um, and some of them have some very different features from reptiles. So here is a uh, look at their jaw. You can see how they have uh, two rows of teeth. Um, their, their tooth attachment, though, is different than other reptiles. They have unique abdominal ribs for protection, and you can see that in the bottom picture, how they kind of overlap each other. Um, they have a well-developed parietal eye in the middle of their head there, and uh, it looks like a translucent spot on top of their head. Um, they think, again, it has to do with some biological cycles. They can be about two feet-ish long. Um, they are oviparous reptiles, and they live in burrows. They'll come out at dusk and dawn to eat invertebrates and small vertebrates. They were originally found on all of New Zealand, but now there's only a few islands that have them. The rats that were brought in by humans, either on purpose or accidentally, have taken over their prey um, sources. And they're trying to have a lot of breeding programs, um, but hopefully they'll be able to bring them back. We'll see. And then we move on to squamata. These are going to be um, snakes and chameleons. Um, there's suborders within this order. So these guys have, um, they diverged 150 million years ago from the leptidosaurs. So we have a suborder Soria. These are the lizards that you think about. Suborder Serpentes, the snakes. And suborder Amphisbania. These are like worm lizards. So the lizards, there's about 4,500 species of lizards. They um, have two pairs of legs, upper and lower jaw, that unite anteriorly, uh, meaning in the front. Uh, they are, most of them are oviparous. Some of them are ovoviviparous or viviparous. That means um, live birth. And they can range from being herbivores, omnivores, and carnivores, and they live in a variety of habitats, and they have a variety of adaptations, as you can see here. There are venomous lizards. There's two species, the Gila monster and the Mexican beaded lizard. The um, native to southwestern North America, they spend many months that are they're inactive in burrows and come out at night to eat invertebrates, bird eggs, and other slow-moving vertebrates. They have venom glands um, in their lower jaw, and it's released into grooves on their teeth. So in order to deliver the venom into their prey, they actually have to bite it or chew it. Um, it they are seldom fatal in humans. Uh, if you get bitten by one of these, it's not going to feel very good. Um, but they do use a particular protein from them to help treat diabetes. And both of these uh, species are endangered because of humans. Now the snakes, there's about 2,900 species of snakes. Uh, their name means to crawl. Most of them are harmless. There's about 300 species that are venomous and they kill about 30,000 people worldwide. Only nine to 10 people in the US die from snake bites. Um, so probably third world countries where they don't have as good of medical treatment is where you're going to see people dying more frequently from snake bites. They have, um, they have an elongate body. They lack limbs. They have more than 200 vertebrae and pairs of ribs, and that helps for more locomotion uh, because the vertebrae are attached to their body wall muscles. Their upper jaws are movable on the skull and the upper and lower jaws are loosely joined by flexible ligaments. So each half can move independently and this is what helps them swallow really large prey. And they are all carnivores. 
just a little bit on the jaw anatomy. Their jaws allow them to sort of walk over their prey, like with their mouth, um, to be able to get it all in because they can't chew it, so they have to swallow it whole. And they're, you can see in the diagram um, how they're very, they have a very flexible, movable jaw. Uh, just some other snakes eating things that are very large in comparison to their bodies. And then there are some very, very large snakes eating very large animals. And there are several videos or a couple video clips I have in the other set of videos for you if you want to watch information on that. Um, snakes are not able, there's not a large enough snake to eat an adult human. This is a picture of a snake that attempted to eat a human. It did kill him because it, it constricts him. Um, but because our shoulders are too wide, they cannot get around a human, adult human's shoulders. They can eat children, but they cannot eat an adult. Um, so unfortunately, this gentleman died because he was squeezed so tight um, and they they don't allow you to breathe and every time you take a breath and release it they get tighter and tighter and tighter that's that's the problem with snakes trying to kill you they can't eat you but they can kill you and then there are pit vipers um, they have a heat detecting pit located just behind their nostril they can detect uh, prey temperature. They can they can sense up to 0 0.01 degree Fahrenheit change in temperature in their surroundings. Um, and they do have a modified pair of teeth to deliver venom. They're almost like hypodermic needles. There's about three species of venomous snakes in New York. And here's what they look like. The eastern Massasagua, the northern copperhead, and a timber rattlesnake. They are endangered or threatened um, because of in people encroaching on their habitats. And snake evolution. Um, snakes are believed to have evolved from burrowing lizards. They lost their limbs and have a protective eye scale that is kind of an indication of that evolution. Um, their elongation of the body has resulted in a reduction or a loss of their left lung and right kidney and that allows for more space within their body. Some primitive snakes will still have vestigial pelvic girdles or hip bones, uh, but they're not useful to them in any way. And then we have the worm lizards, uh, the Amphisbania. There's about 135 species. They are burrowers. You'll find them in Africa, South America, and the Middle East. Most of them are legless, or in that bottom picture, you can see he's got two tiny little cute little legs. Um, they have a shovel-shaped skull, and that's for burrowing purposes. They feed on worms and insects. They're oviparous, so they do lay eggs. And that's the end. So at this point, you can go take your reptile quiz and um, we'll be dissecting snakes for this topic.